Hi, everybody. Welcome to Disposition 23. Uh, my name is Joe Marion. I'm president of ASCDI. This is our third stop on our trip around the world. Uh, we started a day ago in the United States. Um, this morning, we did a stopover in Europe. And here we are in Asia Pacific. You know, they say that you save the best for last. And I think that's exactly what we've done. We are the industry that's positioned to impact sustainability and e-waste. That's a big responsibility not to take lightly. There's a direct tie-in to what we do and clean energy. We harvest renewable resources. And every time we take a product and we put it back into productive use, we're saving energy. Uh, we learned earlier today when we stopped in Europe that 80% of the CO2 footprint occurs when a product is produced. So look, to, look at that a little bit differently. Every time you take a used product and you put it back into productive use, you're saving the planet 80% of the carbon impact. Now enter ESG, environmental social governance. If you can prove to your customers that you're helping them with, with that kind of impact on the environment, they'll pay for that service because that's how your customers are being measured by their investors. Governments around the world are also offering cheap or even free money to companies that can prove they have a positive impact on sustainability uh, and the environment. There are organizations like Adisa and Siri, who by the way are here today, uh, that can uh, offer or help you prove, certify that you provide these services. Um, then uh, if you're an ASCDI member, uh, you can actually prove to your customers that you do provide the services. So the certifying bodies help you prove that you can do it, and the ASCDI helps you prove that you do do it. Um, you'll hear a lot today about the word ITAD. Our industry has begun to use ITAD, IT reseller, service provider, uh, interchangeably, um, but we're all part of the same ecosystem. So whether you have some type of certification or not, you play a role in this new IT reseller world. And that's really what Disposition and ASDI is all about. We want to provide you with the information to help you decide what role you want to play in this new world. So here, uh, what I'm going to do now is kind of go through real quickly what we're doing for the rest of the day. Uh, after I'm done, uh, we're going to hear a little bit uh, from um, Steve Mellons and uh, Roger Grieve about ITAD certifications. Uh, those are from the two certifying bodies that I mentioned. Um, we're going to hear from Chris um, from Blanco. Blanco offers some great tools that you uh, use to help you with data sanitization. Uh, we're going to hear from the e-waste alchemist, uh, Professor Vina. Um, I, I looked at her presentation on YouTube a few days ago. Fantastic. What she has to say is, is going to be very enlightening, I think, to most of us. Uh, we're going to hear about data security obligations in uh, Australia and New Zealand. When we're all done today, we're going to do an hour of our speed networking where you get a chance to talk to everybody who's attending Disposition. They're, they're three-minute speed uh, networking sessions. So uh, please you know, stay, stay tuned for that. Get your webcam ready. And lastly, I want to thank our sponsors because without these guys, this wouldn't be possible. Uh, these companies help finance ASCDI. They help finance Disposition, and they make this all possible. So. Uh, I won't read the names to you. There's too many of them. Um, uh, Renew IT in Australia, Integrity are, are two that I want to call out. But as you see these companies, thank them. Thank them for the role they play in this industry. These are industry leaders. Okay, next up, I'd like to introduce Brett Rogers. Brett. Uh, Brett is the ACI VP of Asia Pacific. Uh, Brett's the founder and the director of Integrity uh, Technology Solutions. And thanks to Brett's efforts, we have a really super forward-looking program today. I've been on numerous calls with Brett. I, I've seen Brett at, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, his time, half asleep. Uh, Brett is dedicated, not dedicated only to this industry, but dedicated to representing our members in Asia Pacific. So, Brett, I, I want to publicly just thank you for all the time and effort you put into ASCDI, into our industry, and specifically to making Disposition 23 a success. Thank you so much, Brett. 
Thank you, Joe. It's uh, it's fantastic to be part of this event, and um, it's fantastic to uh, to see all the support and, uh, and and the emails and the people that have attended over the last uh, greater than twenty four hours now. I think since uh, since it started, and I've been awake for for every single minute of that. So I'm just going to bring up a little bit of a slide as to uh, my view on, uh, I suppose, the the open market here in APAC. Uh, I can just bring up my screen. I think uh, what I wanted to try and do is is not bore people on this call with with facts and figures. I'm pretty sure we all know how to use the internet. Uh, we all know how to um, access uh, you know data that might help or enable our business. But but I suppose what I want to do is take a little bit of a snapshot of, of my experience over the last 25 years in IT and 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 what I think. Um, you need to do to change the conversation to be relevant in industry. I think going back 25, maybe 30 years ago, it was very much a vendor economy. Uh, we had hardware refreshes, uh, they were occurring every three to five years. Nobody ever spoke about what happened to that hardware once it was complete from a data center where it was uh, disposed of after its use. Um, but what did happen is that uh, it created uh, another market where people saw value in it. And that's what, what we kind of call the open market, um, where we, we were seeing these hardware refreshes take place. We would see people that knew that there was still value in that hardware and they would find another market to repurpose that. And a lot of people made a lot of money out of that and it still uh, exists today. It's, it's a little bit challenging and a little bit different. Uh, the vendors make it uh, quite hard in some instances, but it's also, uh, it's also very software driven now. Um, and it makes it harder to become more and more relevant when licensing software, uh, those sort of issues are plaguing in, in any kind of deal. Now, not only above the uh, the recycling, it's sort of, then we had what I would say, we need to change the conversation as to how to become relevant with your customer. And the customer, it, it's not just about buying and selling hardware. It's not just about installing or taking hardware out. It's about, talking to your customer about the whole life cycle of, uh, of IT. So you, I've had to change the way that I've spoken to my clients and, and my business, and that is to become more services led. So that could be from designing um, solutions, uh, it could be to stage infrastructure, it could be to deploy, but quite often there's a lot more that, uh, that once you get into uh, the services discussion that the customer also needs to work out how they can guarantee their client that the data that has been disposed of with these assets has been securely erased. They also have to have an obligation that, you know, if you read any enterprise or government, they have an obligation to the environment. So it's not just about disposing of it in land waste, it's about reusing, repurposing, but engaging in the client and helping them on that journey. And quite often, if I go back a couple of years ago, you would go through these discussions where your customer sees a lot of value in their IT because they know what they paid for it. But when you turn around and you have to tell them how much it's going to cost to dispose of, um, it's a very hard conversation initially because you've got staff that have got to go out to site, you've got to have vehicles that will pick up the hardware, you've got to then have the, the licensing and support to dispose of the infrastructure correctly, but also to provide the certificates that uh, that enable the customer to ensure that his data is correctly managed, protected, the assets are correctly disposed of or repurposed. And once they get involved in that journey, you, you become a lot stickier to the customer in the sense that you're not walking away from the deal, you're part of their ecosystem. You're helping them understand the role and responsibility that they have as an organisation, but also what role you can help them in their organisation by ensuring that they don't end up like another Optus, um, Morgan Stanley or a Medibank, where it can be something as simple as a, as a uh, filing cabinet being disposed of incorrectly or a server disk drive ending up in the wrong hands. And we all see what, what that does to, to businesses, not only in the media, but financially. So I suppose where I'm going with this is that when, I'll just go to the next slide. When, uh, when having these discussions, what ASCDI does is it, uh, it it brings together hundreds of CEOs and executives of people all having the same issue. 
um, all trying to learn the new conversation, but all trying to understand where they're going. And if we took a snapshot of where industry was 10 years ago, compared to where it is today, and, and you know, we had a good spike, I think about 12, 18 months ago because of the silicon issue that created a lot of demand in the broker market. But now we've got issues such as, uh, how would I say it? We've got we've got issues now where we've got customers that have got to have a ten percent reduction in in their in their costs. We've got to have to deal with the inflation issues that are uh, that are occurring throughout. And and where I'm kind of seeing that happening now is that people aren't spending money, but the problem never goes away about being um, part of their IT ecosystem. So when hardware isn't being sold, services are still continuing and your relevance uh, becomes greater. So in this photo here, which is an example of one of the many meetings that we've had, this was, uh, we, we represented, uh, we, we met with Congress in repair.org to, um, to basically put the message out around how, it, how the open market or how the right to repair impacts businesses, not only in the US, but here in Australia. So I just wanted to use that as, as the VP here in, in APAC as, as a discussion as to the relevance of ACDI to me, but also how that conversation, how this really helps the conversation back to my client. So in doing that, we've got some absolutely fantastic speakers from uh, Professor Vayner, who's uh, New South Wales Person of the Year 2022. She's uh, she's very well regarded in industry to right down to security where we've got Damien, who is a very respected uh, chairperson that will talk about information security and, and not about the European GDRP, but how it is in Australia and what our obligation here is in APAC. So we've got a better understanding. So I'm hoping that at the end of this, uh, we all walk away with a little bit more information that'll help us, um, that will help us uh, be more meaningful to our customers. And in doing that, will help us grow our businesses and uh, hopefully get around to, to seeing another, uh, another meeting like this in the near future, hopefully face to face. So I'll hand back to Joe and uh, I look forward to introducing Siri in the next meeting at 8.20. Thank, th thanks, Brett. By the way, stay stay with us, please. Don't don't disappear yet. Um, that was when the first time I saw Brett in a suit. Uh, by the way, so and I'm not wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, let, let me talk about that meeting real quickly. That that was an interesting meeting because you know what? That's a battle that's still going on today. We went to the uh, U.S. Congress and we did, had a discussion about the right to repair. Okay, because if you if you can't fix it, if manufacturers don't give you the diagnostics. And they don't give you the parts uh, to fix the products. You can't put them back into productive use. And uh, we had a situation just this week where um, one of our members uh, had two tape drives uh, and both tape drives went dead the same day. Our members technician went in there and they, what they found out was that the manufacturer put a, a drop dead date into the microcode that said on uh, May 18th of two, uh, 2023, th this drive is not going to work anymore. Uh, and all it took was changing the date in that microcode and that drive would work. The manufacturer refused to do it. Uh, in effect, what the manufacturer said to the customer is, take that electronic good, goods and throw it in the landfill. We're not going to fix it. Um, that battle is still going on today, um, the right to repair here in the United States and, and really ar around the world. So uh, that's the kind of thing that, that, that ASCDI does. The other thing I want to mention, Brett, you know, you, you talked about, you know, the services to a customer. This morning uh, we heard in, uh, at our European meeting uh, about our member who went into a customer's site and the customer had a down in his cellar had uh, servers uh, with disk drives that weren't erased. And the customer said, well, I'm not using these these drives anymore, uh, so I don't need to erase them. Um, our member pointed out to the customer the data risk and having that data sitting around um, uh, unwiped um, and, and it became a service. The customer, uh, he signed with the customer, the customer, the customer agreed to have him wipe the data. These are the kind of services, this is the kind of relationship you wanna have with your customer. You wanna become a, a partner with your customer, helping them protect the data and protect the environment and they'll pay for those services. So it's, 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 it's not an easy conversation to say to the customer, I used to pay for your used hardware, now you're gonna pay me to, re, uh, to remove it but you have to explain to the customer the costs involved if he doesn't do that. Spot on, Joe. Um, where are my timelines? Uh, 
you, I guess so. So, uh, uh, Brett, you want, are we ready for our next speaker? Yep. So, uh, in in five minutes' time, we've got uh, we've got Roger Grieve and Steve Mellings um, from Siri and Adisa. Uh, we'll be on in around four minutes' time, um, okay. where I'll introduce them and uh, we'll we'll go forward. Let me ask you a question while I have you. Then we have a couple more minutes. Then right to repair in in Australia. Okay. You know, what wh what is it like there now? What's the environment like if you want to you know uh, get microcode from a customer uh, from a manufacturer? Uh, to a re uh, reconfigure a drive or erase a drive, uh, is it available? Is is it is it regulated? Um, from I'm um, probably not the. I don't have a lot of experience in dealing in uh, in in the repair of hard drives or uh, or, or servers infrastructure. Customers um, are continuously asking um, or continuously sweating their assets, or instead of sweating their assets, they're moving their assets into the cloud. Um, so making the hardware, let, whilst it's still required, is still more and more meaningful, uh, meaningless to, to have it on site, but to have it securely backed up in a uh, in an Azure, etc. Um, the challenge around repair, it, it, it's it doesn't seem there's, there's there's a lot of conversation going on, but there's not a lot of mandate, and there's not a lot of uh, what I would see uh, pushing out in market around where. Customers are constantly being challenged to to renew or change their infrastructure because of break. Um, so to answer the question, I, I, Repair.org uh, is is very much advocated by a lot of people, but um, how it's being used and 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 I suppose how it's being leveraged here in the region um, is is something I hear a lot more overseas of than here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we had um, uh, in the U.S. just this week. Uh, uh, we had uh, in, in the Minnesota, state of Minnesota, in, in the legislature, they actually debated a right to repair bill. Uh, we've, been, we've spent a lot of time, a lot of money in Minnesota. Um, and then, by the way, the same thing happened in New York State. The last minute, uh, some of the brand holders showed up and they lobbied. They said that it's a security risk to let these guys you know, fix the routers or, or let them fix the hard drives. So they wrote into the bill. They kind of took out the business to business aspect. So that no longer can businesses provide these services to other businesses, um, you know. So it's 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 a battle that continues to this day. Is uh, is is John Deere like the, we probably something in the media over here is repairing of uh, far, farming machinery than it is uh, more so uh, IT at present. Um, it, it, I heard in uh, in the US that maybe some states have approved the ability to repair for say. Farming machinery, or specifically, yes, uh, the, the, state, the state of Colorado did that. Um, uh, the state of Colorado passed it. Yeah, I mean, picture this, okay? You know, in the old days, farmers used to take their tractors, and when the motor broke, they you know they replace the spark plugs or they fix it. Today, tractors are are sometimes they're driverless. They're they're controlled by GPSs. So the GPS you know says where the where the tractor should go, and um, and uh, John Deere has said we no longer can let tr uh, uh, farmers fix their tractors because they might mess up the GPS or something. So uh, all of a sudden, farmers can't fix their tractors anymore. Uh, although in the state of Colorado, they, they can. So, uh, it's happening. Uh, the right to repair is a movement that's uh, you know global. It's happening. Uh, uh, Europe's a little bit different. Europe's, Europe's ahead of the rest of the world. Uh, there are right to repair laws in place in Europe right now. So, so folks, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a 60-second a, a break. Um, we'll be back in 60 seconds. Um, we're going to bring on uh, uh, Steve Mellons and Roger Grave uh, from, uh, I, uh, from Siri and from Adissa, and we'll talk about ITAN certification. So bear with us. We'll be back in just uh, 60 seconds. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.